risk measurement. We're looking at the types of risk measurement methods, and these include, for instance, looking at the risk exposure. Basically, it's the impact of risks which an organization may experience given its current level of risk management maturity. In other words, if you take the sum total of all the risks that an organization might be exposed to and kind of remove everything that the organization is managing to catch, to remediate, to avoid, then we are left with a risk exposure. You could calculate this in you know, financial terms as your expected loss from certain, you know, from overall risks that an organization has. And that's risk exposure. Another type of risk measurement method is sensitivity analysis. So in a sensitivity analysis, you have a scenario and usually put this into a model. So, you know, uh, think of a climate model and you have climate modelers who take into consideration different scenarios for, say, global warming. You're going to see this is still about risks. And if there are slight modifications which they make to their model, they would have you know, different increases in you know, global temperatures. That is a kind of sensitivity analysis. Where I've actually seen this was in a bank for capital adequacy. They would make certain scenarios such as a change in market rates or a change in interest rates or a recession and given one of these factors changing what would be the financial impact or what would be the financial impact if you had a number of different measures changing so it's an analysis which measures how vulnerable an organization is to internal or external changes we have stress testing. In stress testing, you're trying to determine the reliability of a risk response. So let's stay on that little sensitivity analysis model. We are now trying to change the parameters of that model to see at which point, you know, for, for my particular example of capital adequacy, at which point would the bank not have sufficient capital to meet its demands? And so stress testing would be the point you know, at, at which you'd really have problems, and it's kind of test. Another risk measurement method includes monitoring KRI, so that's key risk indicators. And they are a measure of risk or risk exposures. So, you know, I've, I've belonged in one company to our uh, operational risk committee. On that operational risk committee, we used to get risk reporting. So, you know, KRI from different parts of the company. Those could have been, you know, a number of, you know, late returns. Let me just stay vague with that. Or number of incidents or, you know, number of say GDPR incidents, number of cybersecurity problems that would have been brought up, and especially if you know, there, was, there was testing by the internal control function in the organization, we'd be able to understand you know, where we're going with you know, these risks. Are there changes in the risks? Are there increases or decreases? As an advisory service, you know, as part of our internal audit function, I've also created this kind of key risk indicator. But in any case, by monitoring key risk indicators, you can know if there's been increases or decreases in a risk area. Mm -hmm.